Who would have thought that Shohei Otani's kryptonite would end up being a kill Badu who went two for two against Shohei yesterday, but the Angels, they did get the last laugh. And speaking of laughing, look at Miggy at first base when Shohei Otani actually got there. He gave him a cup check. I am going to miss Miggy so much when he retires, even though I have extreme levels of PTSD from Miggy when he was a Triple Crown winner. I'm a Cleveland fan. I'm still going to miss him. But either way, what's going on, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. If this is your first time on the channel, we do this every single day, so don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. The Padres, they finally won a game yesterday, and it was maybe the game of the year. We're going to go ahead and show that. And the Diamondbacks, they made Major League Baseball history but for all the wrong reasons. If you're going to any baseball games, minor league or major league anytime soon, make sure that you guys use code FUZZY on SeatGeek to save yourself 20 bucks off your entire purchase. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the walk-offs from yesterday. So obviously the Padres won, but let's bring up the Mariners first and foremost, because they were going up against a Titan, the Tampa Bay Rays. We have Randy Arozarena. He now has a 12 game hitting streak because he literally threw his bat at the ball and he was able to run out a single. But then the Mariners and answered back, JP Crawford drives an RBI, and Randy answers back again. He is the fifth player in baseball to join the 10 stolen base, 10 home run club. But then you have Ty hitting one to France, get it, because his name is Ty France, and then Shed Long Jr. comes in to tie it up as pinch hitter Kyle Seeger. I don't know why they pinch hit Taylor Trammell, because it was still a lefty righty matchup, but good for Kyle Seeger. He wins it for the Mariners, and speaking of the Mariners, I am going to a AAA game tonight, the Aviators versus the Rainiers. And if you don't know, Jared Kelnick is on the Rainiers. I could not be more excited. I might vlog, but then again, I might not. I don't know. What do you guys think? The second and final walk-off from yesterday and potentially a Game of the Year candidate, the Reds' winning streak was halted in front of 40,000 crazy Padre fans. It was a pitcher's duel going into the sixth inning as Joe Musgrove was scoreless. His strikeouts were down, so of course everyone is saying Joe Musgrove is a cheater. Same with Garrett Cole because their strikeouts were down. Musgrove was still really good. And speaking of really good, Wade Miley took a no-hitter into the sixth inning. And then Fernando Tatis Jr. Jr. hit home run number 22. He made history. We'll talk about that after the walk-off because Manny Machado, he made a play in right field because the Padres, they love to use the shift. And then he hits a home run. You have Tyler Stevenson tying it up and then Jonathan India. So the Reds, they're young prospects, they're young studs. They actually get the lead back. But then Eric Hosmer and Victor, I call him Victory Caratini, they walk off the Cincinnati Reds and they win 6-4. to four. And if you guys are wondering how Fernando Tatis Jr. made history, he joins Cody Bellinger as the only 22 years old or younger players in MLB history to have 22 home runs in the first 53 games that they've played in the season. 22 home runs in 53 games? How does a human do that? And it just goes to show you that Cody Bellinger, even though he's been injured a lot and not really performing at his peak, he's one of the best players in baseball. We have more Major League Baseball history being made yesterday. If you're a Diamondbacks fan, please close your ears. The Diamondbacks have officially lost 23 games on the road, which is a new Major League Baseball record. And the Giants, on the other hand, they keep on winning four in a row. As Kurt Casale, he mashes Zach Gallen. You have Mauricio Dubon and Casale making it six to nothing. And Kevin Gosman, he might be the best pitcher in baseball not named Jacob deGrom over the last 150 innings. He goes eight innings, only allows four hits, and has six strikeouts for his eighth win of the season. He has a 1.51 ERA to begin the season and dating back to the beginning of 2020 in his last 150 innings, he has a combined 2.35 ERA and a 2.66 fit. Both of those are elite numbers. And then Mike Yastrzemski with kind of the cherry on top, he drives in the final two runs of the game as the San Francisco Giants are now two and a half games ahead of the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks, they should just trade everyone and start over because it's not working. It's not happening this year. The Orioles, um, they are also on a consecutive losing streak streak in terms of road games. They have lost 18 or 19 in a row. This one came at the hands of Cleveland as Eli Morgan, he was making his second start. He gets hit in the elbow, but he actually made the play because it went straight to the third baseman. Jose Ramirez rewards that toughness with a two-run home run. He has 31 doubles and 33 home runs in his last 124 games. So in terms of extra base hits, there's not really anyone better than Jose Ramirez. Bobby Bradley hit his fourth home run in his first 10 games. 
Eddie Rosario hit his first home run at Progressive Field after pretty much being Babe Ruth throughout his career in Progressive. Ernie Clement and Yu Chang were the unsung heroes yesterday. They drive in a total of three runs before the eighth inning, and then Yu Chang out of nowhere hits an absolute nuke to left field as Cleveland, they beat the Orioles 10-3. And Cleveland, they're on a four-game winning streak and surprisingly only three games back of the Chicago White Sox. Actually, three and a half games back. Not very often the Yankees get to say this, but they were saved by defense yesterday as they beat the Blue Jays 8-4. The Yankees turn a triple play on horrible base running all around. Marcus Simeon, bad. Bo Bichette, he should be standing on third base, so I'm gonna, even though I love Bo, I'm gonna say that he was part of the blame as well. Gio Urshela with a two-run home run, and then Randall Grichik, who a lot of people call the Yankees killer. He continues to be a thorn in the side of New York fans. He ties it up, and then Kevin Biggio adds another one on this. No, he doesn't. Aaron Judge, he uses all six foot seven of that frame to jump up and rob this home run. Anton goes about the same area, but because they were playing the pull shift, there's no way anyone was going to be able to rob that. And I think, honestly, I mean, even if you jumped as high as you could, you're not taking that one back from Stanton. Chris Giddens ends that day with three RBIs, and I want to show a play from the fourth inning, so we're going to go back in time. Gio Urshela looked like prime Manny Machado or prime Nolan Arenado. I mean, he's easily one of the most underrated defenders in all of baseball, not just third basemen. He makes hard plays look somewhat Routine. All right, let's talk about Shohei Otani because he might be having the greatest first half in Major League Baseball history. A perfect play for me as a Otani and a Kill Badu fan. So Badu doubles, but Luis Renjifo throws a seed to nab Badu trying to go to third base. He would have been the leader in triples yet again, but he gets thrown out. Matt Manning, he was pretty good in his debut. He went five innings, only gave up two earned runs, but that was because of some shaky defense and lazy defense from the Tigers. But he threw 70% fastballs. I don't think that he can make it in baseball. If he does that, I mean, unless it's just that good of a fastball. Otani, he goes six innings, only allows one run and has five strikeouts. And Taylor Ward hits his first career grand slam and he makes it count. Iggy, I want to show this cup check one more time because the Angels, they escape with the victory and I want to talk about something fun if you're a Tigers fan. So Otani, one of my favorite human beings on planet Earth right now. He was walk yesterday and as he was giving his equipment to the batter's boy, he tapped the guy on the back and then on his way to first base, he picked up a piece of trash from the ground. I mean, I just love Shohei. And even as a baseball player, I mean, what is Shohei Otani doing as a pitcher? He has a 2.7 ERA and a 12-something strikeouts per nine. And as a hitter, he has 19 home runs, 10 stolen bases, and collectively, he has a 4.3 war on the season. Again, this is one of the most insane and unheard of first halves, or even just half of baseball in Major League Baseball history. So let me know in the comment section down below, who is your MVP favorite at the moment? Is it Vladimir Guerrero Jr. or is it Shohei Otani or is it someone on the Astros, Mr. Jose Altuve? He is playing like an MVP as of late, but we'll talk about him in a second. Michael Brantley hit a three-run home run. So since 2014, Michael Brantley has a 313 batting average and an almost 130 OPS plus, one of the most consistent hitters that I've ever seen. Chaz McCormick, he is pretty much a better version of Miles Straw, in my opinion. He makes a great grab. And then Carlos Correa with an RBI double. That kind of sets up the plate for rookie Abraham Toro. He drives in two RBIs and Jose Altuve has eight home runs in his last 10 games. Like I mentioned, he is playing like an MVP. He's going to get some votes. He's probably not going to win, but he might be the player of the month card for MLB The Show in the month of June. And then Toro, he ends the day with four RBIs as the Astros win 10 to 2. The Astros are the only team in Major League Baseball with a plus 100 run differential. So they've outscored their opponents by 103 runs. We have two teams vying for first place in the NL Central, the Brewers and the Cubs. So let's talk about them back to back. CJ Crone, this grand slam off Corbin Burns, it was the worst timing ever because again, just like we mentioned earlier on with Joe Musgrove, everyone is saying that these guys are not elite without the sticky stuff, even though his spin rate was roughly the same yesterday for Corbin Burns. So with that grand slam and a Garrett Hampson home run, you have Burns getting Wait, hold on. That was not Burns. I don't know why I wrote that. It was definitely Brandon Woodruff. Brandon Woodruff and Corbin Burns have both been accused of cheating because their spin rate and efficiency has gone down the last few starts. Herman Marquez goes six scoreless innings yesterday, only allowed one hit in a showcase game because I fully expect the Angels to try and acquire Herman Marquez. If they can do that, they might make a shot at the playoffs. The Rockies, they score two more in the sixth as the Brewers have now lost four games in a row and the Rockies have won four. Luckily for the Brewers, the Cubs have not 
not been playing the best as of late as well, but they do win yesterday courtesy of a two-run shot from Javier Baez. He has 16 home runs and a two-war, but he has 91 strikeouts to eight walks, so that's just the MO on Javier Baez. He's going to play nice defense. He's going to hit a home run every now and then and steal that extra base, but he is one of the worst players in history at actually walking. Marcus Stroman did settle down, but it was unfortunate that the Mets offense was shut out yesterday because Hendricks, Kyle did not allow a single run, racked up seven strikeouts, only allowed two hits, and Craig Kimbrell, who has been so dominant, gets his 19th save of the year, so he's now number one in all of baseball. So the Cubs, they're one game ahead of the Brewers. And last but not least, the Braves versus the Cardinals. Both teams are now four and six in their last 10 games. Guillermo Heredia hits a home run, and Ozzy Albies, he legs out an RBI triple he now leads the National League in triples and also I think in all of Major League Baseball in triples he has an 846 OPS with runners in scoring position but yesterday was the Charlie Morton show he took a no hitter into the seventh inning he ends up going seven and two thirds shutout innings with three hits and seven strikeouts the Braves I think they're six and a half games back of first place because the Mets have been playing so well so the Braves they got to keep this up all right everyone well that does it for today's MLB recap if you did enjoy please don't forget to hit that subscribe button also use code fuzzy if you're going to any minor league games or major league games to end today's video one of my favorite performances in mlb history on this day in mlb history clayton kershaw did this oh and two got it he's done it